Let's learn how to conditional render in a MAUI application the right way. So here in this MAUI application, we're taking a pretty traditional approach to conditional rendering, but we're gonna find out that binding to is visible for conditional rendering is not great. So let's run our application and see why this isn't the greatest solution. So as we can see, it works fine. We're toggling the visibility and we hide and show the correct elements. But if we come over to something like the live visual tree, and we look at our vertical stack layout, which contains both of the labels we want to conditional render, we'll see that even though we're hiding one of these labels, we're always rendering both of them. So we're wasting resources on rendering an element that we don't even display on the UI. Now, of course, we're just dealing with labels here, so not really gonna be any performance impact at all. But imagine the element you wanna hide is like a list view that contains a thousand elements. It would be a waste of resources to still render that in your visual tree and then hide it. Like it's not even displayed on the screen, just a waste of resources to render it. So that said, binding to is visible, not the greatest solution from a performance perspective. And even from like a usability perspective, it's not that great binding to is visible and doing these quirky bindings, doing like an inverted bool converter. It's not that great. So we have two problems here. We want to address the performance issues and make sure that we're not rendering an element that we're hiding anyways. And we would like the interface or the mechanism we use for conditional rendering to be a little bit better than just is visible bindings, which again, are kind of quirky. So the first issue we're gonna tackle is the performance side of it. So rather than doing is visible checks, let's switch this over to a content view. So this is basically just gonna be a container for whatever element we wanna display at a time. So starting off, let's just say, by default, we're gonna show the disabled text. So let's get rid of this is visible binding. And we're just gonna show this disabled label. And then whenever our is checked checkbox becomes true or is checked on our checkbox is true, we wanna show this enabled label. And we wanna overwrite this disabled label with the enabled one. So the way to do this is with a trigger. So we're gonna add a trigger on our content view specifically a data trigger and we're gonna have a binding on that which is just gonna be this binding and whenever our is enable checkbox is checked is true so the value is true then we want to replace so we're gonna re we're gonna use a setter to replace the content on this content view with our is or with our enable checkbox so we're gonna open this up with a setter value and paste in our enable checkbox. And we don't need to set this is visible flag. There we go. And that should be our solution for performance. I think one last thing for this data trigger, we need to specify the target type and that's gonna be our content view. So the type that we're setting this data trigger on is the content view. So this should give us what we want. And when we start up the application, actually, let's just see it. Let's see what we're working with here. This should be fun. All right, so let's go to the live visual tree. As you can see, we're showing our disabled label Oh, we got to dig in here. So our content view, there we go, only has one label for our disabled label. But now if we come over and switch or check off this checkbox, show the enabled text, come back to the live visual tree. Again, we only have one label, this time for our enabled checkbox. So now we're doing true conditional rendering, where we're literally not rendering the element that we don't want to show. But this is arguably more complex than the is visible bindings that we had before. Or at least it seems like it takes up more code. We have to dig into like data triggers and stuff. And really the concept of conditional rendering is a pretty universal thing. So we should be able to come up with some kind of abstraction to simplify this and build something that's easy to apply everywhere that we want a conditional render. And the way to do that is with a custom component. So let's come over to our project and we're gonna create a new item here just a regular class should do and we're going to call this if so basically what we're doing is building an if statement in xaml and ultimately we want to have something that's almost as easy to use as something like conditional rendering with a ternary operator in frameworks like react which is dead simple but a lot harder in xaml but we're going to make it easier so we're going to have our if statement component and similar approach, we're going to basically do the same thing, but just abstract it in a component. 
So we're gonna inherit from content view actually. So this is gonna be a content view. And we're gonna have to define some properties on here for the different elements that we want our if statement to take in. And actually rather than just building it, maybe I should demonstrate the vision I have for this component. So I wanna have some sort of, here we'll just import it and use it, some sort of if statement component. It should be able to take our margin, which I think it can since this is a content view, we get that attribute or property inherited. But I wanna be able to do something like local, like our if statement component and set some kind of true property. And if some sort of condition is true, then I wanna render my enabled text. And then if some, or if this condition is false, I wanna render the disabled text. And then I wanna have some condition that we bind to. So we wanna have some sort of condition property that this is all dependent on. And that's gonna be our is checked checkbox. So here we go, basically the if statement is gonna check this condition. So in this case, if is checked is true on our checkbox, it's gonna render this true component. And then if is checked is false, we wanna render this false component. And as you can see, this is much more easy to use in my opinion. So let's get rid of the old solution and we're gonna build this if component. So first off, we're gonna need these attributes and what the heck are these? They're bindable properties. So let's add those to our if component. So unfortunately, I don't have a snippet for creating a bindable property. So I'll link this documentation in the video description and we can just copy these snippets out for building our own uh, bindable properties. So first we need to define our bindable property. So let's define that. So let's copy that, paste that in. And this first one's gonna be for the condition property, which is gonna be a Boolean. By default, we can make it false. And this is gonna be on our if component. And this condition property needs to reference a property on our if object, the actual instance, that's gonna contain the value of condition on our if component. So let's copy that from this documentation too. This is an accessor. That's what I guess the correct name is. Let's paste that. It is going to be a Boolean, except this time we want to name this condition, not is expanded. It's going to be getting the value of our condition bindable property. And we need to reference this property. We can do name of so we get some type safety here. And there we go. We got our bindable property and we should see this error go away. So we got one property down. Now we need the true and false properties. So let's start off by just copying these. So we're gonna copy this once and twice for our two new properties. And this content that we pass to the true and false properties, these are views. So we're gonna have a true property. The type of this again is gonna be a view. By default, it can be null and it'll reference a true property on our if object instance. Make sure we update the type of this as well and update all of this. Lots of updating to do, looks good. And then same exact thing for the false component too. Let me just copy this and replace the one that we pasted previously. So this will be for a false property. Let's make sure we paste that. Don't miss anything with copy and paste, which I have done in the past when copying all of this boilerplate, but looks like we got it. Okay, so we have three properties, our condition Boolean and our true and false views and those are getting picked up in our XAML. But now we need to add some behavior to this if component to actually do something based on these properties. So let's start off by just defining a method to capture the logic that we want. So we're gonna have some sort of update content method. And whenever our condition is true, we wanna set the content property on our content view to be the true content. And then otherwise we wanna set the content to be the false content. So that's the logic we wanna execute, but when do we execute this? So most obvious, we wanna call this method whenever the condition property changes, but honestly, we should also call this method whenever the false or true content changes for some reason, if they did. So whenever any of these properties change, we should call update content. So the recommended way to tap in the property changes for a bindable property is actually up here on the bindable property create method. So we can tap on a property changed handler and let's call this on content dependent property changed. So this will be a single callback that we use for 
all of our properties. Let's generate this, so generate the method. Let's move this further down underneath all of our properties. And we wanna set this property change callback on all of our bindable properties. So now, whenever a content dependent property changes, so either the condition, true or false components, then we simply wanna call update content. But we can't do that. And the reason we can't do that is because this is a static handler. So since it's static, we're not within an instance of an if component. So how do we get the if component that we wanna update the content for? Well, it's actually just this bindable object. So this bindable parameter that gets passed to this callback is our if instance that we wanna update. So we can just do some casting here. So we're gonna get the current if component, which is gonna be our bindable casted to an if. And now we just gotta take this current if and call update content on it. So let's summarize what we did. So we have a bindable property for the condition that we want to conditional render elements based on. We have a true view for the content we want to show when our condition is true. And we have a false view for the content we want to show when our condition is false. And we're correctly showing these different views based on the condition whenever one of the properties change. So now let's run this. This is going to be awesome. Here we go, so we fire this property changed callback on startup actually, and that's because we're initializing these different values, which is good because we do need to initialize the content, which by default is null. So that was successful. We show the disabled text, but then we click is enabled. Here we go, we hit our breakpoint. Looks like our condition property became true, obviously. So we call update content. Whoops, I stepped over it, but it did show the true content based on our new condition value. We can see that in the UI, we are rendering our enabled text now. And just to make sure, looking at the visual tree, we are only showing that single label. So we're again, we're doing real conditional rendering and not rendering elements that we shouldn't be rendering that we're not showing on the screen. So one more thing I wanted to show, this if component is pretty flexible. So you don't need to pass in a false and a true element. You can only pass in one. So we could remove this false element and only have an element we wanna display when our condition is true. And if we run this, it should work as expected. We show nothing when the checkbox is disabled and then we click it and we show our enabled text. So pretty cool. We've taken care of some performance concerns with conditional rendering. That would be an issue if we just did binding to is visible so we're correctly conditional rendering and not rendering components that we're not displaying on the screen. And we've even created this custom if statement component that makes conditional rendering much more pleasant to work with. And this solution, it's only 50 lines of code, one file. Source code's gonna be in the description and feel free to apply this to your own Maui application in order to conditional render the right way.